Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. I hope you're all doing very well. Exciting day ahead for Manchester United fans. Not just because the players are back in training. We'll talk about that political bit in a moment. But today is the day, lunchtime is the time, where Manchester United, Ed Woodward, will be speaking to shareholders. So we should get an insight around lunchtime, one o'clock, as to what our transfer strategy is. We might not get anything, but I think there will be a few bits in there. And I expect, my prediction is that we will, we, will, we will keep the momentum of hope that we will be doing business this summer. I can't imagine him coming out and saying, it's a very hard market, we're going to struggle to make signings this summer because of the losses. I'd be very surprised if he did that. Some would say, well, that's naive because the Glazers could do that, but I don't think so. I think United will be looking to make signings and I think that will be confirmed. But look, let's get into today's transfer business first. Uh, there's some quotes from Solskjaer to talk about, but I think more interestingly, let's talk about uh, a couple of stories around Jack Grealish. Uh, and Delit. Um, this is uh, rather interesting around Jack Grealish. That um, I mean, it's Alan Hutton who's a former Villa player. I don't, I don't focus on that. But actually, what he said is very, very true. How do Aston Villa hold on to Jack Grealish if they get relegated? And let's not forget, Aston Villa at the moment do currently occupy one of the bottom three places. Now, look, if football comes back, they could get rele If football doesn't come back, they could get relegated under the whole what's happened at Scotland and what's happened in France. But I don't think that will happen. Hopefully we will see football back. Can Villa stay up? Will Grealish stay? Will Grealish stay anyway? There is a feeling around these parts in the Midlands that Great Grealish is looking to leave Aston Villa. He's done everything he needs to do there. He's been in the Championship. He's got them promoted. He's done well individually in the Premier League, but the team is still in the bottom three. If you are a player and the, the talk around Grealish is this, that he's done everything he can for Villa. You know, there was times probably three, four years ago where there was question marks about Grealish in the Villa, in Villa fans, whether he was good enough. Over the last couple of years, he's shown he's good enough, but the team can't match his ability. As I said, his stats in the Premier League this year are better than James Madison. Madison's in third, Villa, Grealish, third from bottom. So he will look for that move this summer. Where is he going to go? And that's where Manchester United come in. I still, I, I've got no, I, you know, I think somebody said to me the other day, oh, you don't want Grealish, you want Bellingham and Sancho. Well, that's my ideal too, if we're going to get to. I think Bellingham gives us more than Grealish does because Bellingham is a CDM and we need that. And also I think growing up with Matic and, and Fred and McTominay and, and Pogba and Bruno, Bellingham will just become a superb player. You bring Grealish into those five midfielders and I'm like, well, where does Grealish fit in? He's not a holding midfielder. He's not even really a box, box midfielder. He's more of an attacking midfielder. Um... And is he going to be happy to be a bit part player behind Bruno and maybe Pogba? So I like the look. I like Grealish. I do like Grealish, but I don't see where he fits into Manchester United. And remember, I was told six weeks ago that Manchester United are very interested in Jack Grealish, but their interest in Grealish back in February, which was very real, was because they knew Pogba was going to force a move in the summer. This was before lockdown. This was before this horrible virus. Pogba was going to force a move in the summer. He was going to get back, play the last few games of the season for United, go to the Euros with France, enjoy it. And then after the Euros, he was going to force the move that he wanted last summer. And that was going to happen. And United were going to get Grealish. The world has changed. We know the world has changed. But of course, because the world changes, some people cling on to what was going to happen before. Yes, United were very close to sorting a deal for Grealish in February. They knew Pogba was going to go. Now... Pogba might not go. The chances are Pogba probably won't go. And do United still go for Grealish when they've got Pogba? And look, they might do. They might do. But it's not as certain as it was. And um, look, Grealish will definitely come to United if we want him. Will it happen? Could it be another Pochettino? Ships passing in the night. The timing's not quite right. We'll have to wait and see on that. But Grealish will move this summer. Will Manchester United still make their move? Should they? Get in the comments, let me know. Gazeta della Sport are also talking about Manchester United again and Juventus again. We were taught, we spoke about Douglas Costa, Rabiot last week. Um, the next one is De Litt. And De Litt is being mentioned as a player that Manchester United really want. And Barcelona are interested. I mean, look, it feels like, I can't believe, it was, it was only a year ago where we had the whole De Litt saga going on for about six weeks. United are going to get De Litt and they're not going to get De Litt and he ends up going to Juventus. Remember, De Litt is basically owned or agent is Mino Riola. So this to me is where I start to retract a bit. But look, if if Juventus want to say we want Pogba, you can have De Litt, maybe there's a conversation to be had. I would still say no, because why do we want a centre-back for a midfielder when our priority positions are right wing striker and midfielder? But some would take De Litt for Pogba. I don't know what you would think on that. But apparently De Litt wants to stay in Turin at Juventus anyway. 
And again, I just think what this is, it's this constant drip drip effect of linking Manchester United to Juventus players so that mentality of Manchester United players starts to get that into their mind and think that that's the norm. It's not the norm. We're not having any Juventus players from Juventus because we're not giving them Paul Pogba for their players that they don't want. And I think we need to keep firm on that. So look, Delit for Pogba, maybe you think that's a good idea. I personally don't. I mean, Delit. Do De Ligt and Harry Maguire work well together? I don't. I don't. I still think there's a lack of pace there. So to me, it's not. You know, you've got to get out of that Galactico mentality where you just go and buy good players that don't necessarily fit with with the team that you've got. Like Manchester United could sign Kevin De Bruyne, but where would he fit in? You can't pay Pogba, De Bruyne, and Bruno. I mean, you could in your dreams, but where's the defensive discipline? Where's the structure? Where's the shape? And that's a Galactico signing. That's what Real Madrid used to do years ago. United, De Ligt's a fantastic centre-back, but, but is that a good swap for United with Pogba? No, it's not. And um, as we go to what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has spoken about, I mean, this was um, some quotes coming out from, uh, I think he did an interview with uh, United We Stand fanzine, um, and uh, it's obviously floating around the media at the moment. Um, he's come out with some interesting quotes, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He said that, you know, I'm a red through and through, and I'm here for the long term. Um, and that I'd rather have a hole in a, in a team than an arsehole. Um, because, and then it's all about, you know, personality. Um, and look, I think Solskjaer talks the talk. We know Solskjaer talks the talk and we know he's got the backing of the fans at the moment. Um, but it's time to walk the walk. I mean, red through and through, I'm here for the long term. You are a red through and through. You played in one of the most, if not the most iconic Manchester United side ever. And you played for the greatest manager we've ever had. You are uh, infiltrated into the ways of Manchester United playing football. I mean, look, if this was Star Wars and Sir Alex Ferguson is Master Yoda, then, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is certainly Obi-Wan. You know, he's got the he's got the, the force, he's got the training, he's got everything to go and be a bloody good Jedi. Um, but I would say over the last 18 months at Manchester United, he's not shown enough of the force. Um, he sh he, he's been a bit, it's been a bit pedantic. It's been a bit... It's been a bit like Tony Pulis, to be honest. It's been a bit like Van Hal, actually. Let's be fair. It's been a bit like Van Hal. It's been two holding midfielders this season. It's been counter-attacking football. Um, we've scored some good goals, but the enjoyment factor in Manchester United games is a little bit hit and miss because when we score the goals, it's great, and then you're waiting 20 minutes to have another counter-attack and score. We're, a fast, we're an exciting team on the break, but I think out of a 90-minute game, you're only excited for about 10 minutes. Whereas if you watch Man City or Liverpool, they excite you for about 85. So we've got to turn the tide on that. We've got to start being an entertaining side. So when he says he's a red through and through and he's here for the long term, as I said on last night's show, which I really enjoyed, where we talked about being back in training and what Solskjaer's issues are that he's got to solve over the next few weeks, he's got to start playing good football. Um, you know, you can't be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, um, 99 treble winner, um, icon, um, part of the greatest period of success in United's history with brilliant football. You can't be that that person and then hide behind that but play like Mourinho. Like, you know, we had Mourinho and Mourinho took us to second and won trophies based on winning games, not playing great football. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer comes with, a, I think, a, a demand that he's got to play good football. He knows that. And I, I expect a change. I think we've seen a change with Bruno, and I, ex I expect more changes now. With how do you not entertain you? How do you play counter-attacking football that doesn't really entertain your fans when you've got Rashford, Martial, Dan James, Paul Pogba, Bruno Fernandez? You know, you've, there's too much flair in that team to spend most of your game sat soaking up pressure, waiting to hit on the break. And I think, I think a lot of the counter. I hope a lot of the counter-attacking football, which was definitely a deliberate tactic, by the way. We've seen it time and time again against Liverpool and City and Chelsea. I'm hoping that was because he didn't have the players to, to sort of expand our, our time. And um, that's definitely what we need to do. So I look forward to that. Um, he also spoke about, you know, arsehole not... Uh, I'd rather have a hole in the team than an arsehole. I think there is one player he's talking about here. Um, and I think it's Alexi Sanchez. And... I think this encourages me about Solskjaer because I think Sol I think Alexis Sanchez is so symbolic and we're back in transfers here because it, during this week as I said he's there's a rumor that he wants to stay at Inter Milan and I hope he does. If we bring Alexis Sanchez back this summer, we all know he's the arsehole. Whether he's the arsehole in personality, he's obstructive, he's not performed, he's paid the, he's the best paid player in the Premier League. Um, is he really committed to Manchester United? If he comes back and says I'm committed, I don't want that. I think that we are turning a new page. And when Solskjaer says, I'm here for the long term, 
There is patience with the long term when you're building something. There's impatience with the long term when you bring somebody back like Sanchez, who's not here for the long term on age. He's not here for the long term on ability. And he's, you know, he's massively overpaid and he is symbolic of the problems of the past. We must keep Alexis Sanchez away from Manchester United this summer. Even if we have to keep paying off of his wages, him coming back, I think, psychologically sets the team back. And I think that's what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is talking about there, about personality. He said, there's no bad apples in this squad. We don't want our, we'd rather have a hole than an arsehole. And I think he's right. I think he's right. And I think it's interesting because he spoke about March 2019 and after the PSG game, and he basically saw results go against us and basically said, I saw players that weren't here for the long term for me. But the thing is, it wasn't Pogba because Pogba's still here and and, 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 and and we forced Pogba to stay. So it's not Pogba. It's not Fred because there's been patience with Fred. It's not Matic because Matic is still here. It's not Rashford and Martial because they're a massive part of this season. Um, and it's not Phil Jones because Phil Jones is here and it's not Lingard because he's still here. You When you actually dissect it, it can only be two or three players. And those two or three, and it's not Herrera because Herrera was superb for Solskjaer and Solskjaer openly wanted to keep Herrera. Herrera had already decided to go before Oli even had his job because of, of his letting his contract down. There's three players it could be, really. There's Romelu Lukaku, there's Chris Smalling, and there is um, um, Alexi Sanchez. And of course, there's a couple of other players that, that left, like Antonio Valencia, etc. But I don't think it would be him. So I think it is Alexis Sanchez, maybe Lukaku to a certain extent, I don't know. I don't think it's Chris Smalling. I mean, Chris Smalling's not a bad egg, he's not an arsehole, he's not that. I think Chris Smalling wanted first-team football that Oli couldn't give him. So I think it comes down to Lukaku and Sanchez, really, and I think it's probably more Sanchez. Um, Lukaku, there's always been positivity from Lukaku towards Solskjaer and it's been re re reciprocated, but maybe that's just the public face, I don't know. But um, it is interesting, and I do think that... Um, you know, it's time for Oli to, to walk the walk. There is a bit of thin ice underneath him. I mean, he is still on track for the worst ever Premier League points total. But top four's there to be got. Everybody's fit. Watch the video from last night. But, you know, encouraging from Solskjaer. And I think he does talk the talk very well. It's time to walk the walk. Um, he also apparently wants to keep Diogo de low at Manchester United. There has been some interest from teams like Barcelona and PSG. Um, I think on de low, I'm... I'm yeah, I described him on the show with Ricky and Adam as a, a player that if I was describing him at the moment on a tier of, of, of training of, of transfers, I wouldn't put him as a good transfer or as an elite transfer. I'd, put him, I'd probably put him in as an average transfer because we bought him injured. He spent a lot of time injured. Um, there's been glimpses when he's played well, but also I think defensively he's very poor. Um, going forward, he looks like he can whip a cross in. But I'm, I think there's a massive question mark next to Diego Delo. And the first thing he needs to do is stay fit. The second thing he needs to do is work with Wan-Bissaka so he understands how to defend. And the third thing he needs to do is to really start knocking on that door of the first team. Because at the moment, I feel like he's a Carabao Cup player at home to Macclesfield. I don't think he's any better than that. But it's interesting that there is interest from decent teams for him. So I think Solskjaer's right to not sell him when you're getting interest from big clubs. That would make me think, hmm, there is a player there. But he's got to stay fit. And you can't say... I'll get rid of Phil Jones and Rojo and Bay because they're always injured. Delo's always injured. He's got to stay fit. And especially as a young player, you don't want to spend all your, all your career being injury prone. So I think with Delo, we need to see what's going to happen with him. But look, for me, it's all about the weekend. It's not all about the weekend. It is all about the weekend. But it's all about lunchtime. What's going to be said by Ed Woodward? It could be really boring and mundane. There might be some headline in there that we need to go live about. But we'll definitely be live at 8 o'clock for you. Smash a like on the video. Finally, um, I didn't have time to talk about it. We'll talk about it on the 8 o'clock show, actually. It's about fairness and uh, the Premier League return and everything like that. We'll do it on the 8 o'clock show. It's fine. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Smash a like on the video. And if you want to get a T-shirt, the link is in the video description. It's nice and warm these days. We've got loads of T-shirts you can get. They do ship worldwide. Link in the video description. I'll speak to you all soon.